Hello everyone, welcome to Micro Minute. My name is Marty Jobson and this is actually the second time I'm going to be showing you a sample. The sample is the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the causative agent of COVID-19, obviously. Um, the coronavirus that we're all far too familiar with. In the first run through I did of this, I basically just looked at the scale of, of the virus particles. How small are they? Just how teeny tiny are they? This time, I'm going to give you a bit more of the technical detail. So this is kind of the behind the scenes, under the hood version with a bit more of the, the hard science. So, OK. How are we actually seeing this virus particle? Because the virus particle is 50 nanometers across. It is far, far too small to be seen with an ordinary light microscope. The way we're doing it is we are using this microscope, or one very similar to it. Um, and I'll just move myself over there. So this thing, this thing here, is a scanning electron microscope. And this particular one is down in Cambridgeshire, in a place called Camborne, at the Zeiss headquarters. And Zeiss helped me with this. And it's the lovely folks at Zeiss that managed to get hold of this sample. And the sample itself goes in there, basically. It gets stuffed in there, and the detectors all around it are then used to visualise it. So let me show you what the inside of this particular microscope looks like. So if I go there like that, it takes me back over there. And now we're seeing there's a little camera at the side looking at the sample. And what you have here is at the top is where the beam of electrons comes down. This is an electron microscope. Uh, and it scans across with a beam of electrons. And obviously, because there are electrons, it's not using light at all. It means we can see much smaller things. Now, normally, when you look at using a scanning electron microscope, you're actually looking at uh, electrons that are sort of fired off at angles and are picked up by these detectors here. And uh, there's also one on the other side. But for this, we're actually looking at using a detector below. And it's this thing here, this bar of metal here has a detector in it and right here is the sample and the electrons go through the sample and then if there's anything in the way of the electrons we don't see any electrons underneath so we get we get an, an image so let's cut to the image and to do that I have to switch detectors which is the tricky bit as far as I'm concerned now um, I'm operating this entirely um, oops entirely remotely um, and it's actually down in uh, down down south uh, is Ken and Steve, and let's oops we're zoomed in I forgot to zoom out, uh, let's zoom right out to about there somewhere like that. Um, now this sample came from Public Health England uh, from Matthew Hanna provided it for us, and what they've done is they've taken a tiny little copper grid, okay, and the copper grid is maybe a couple of millimeters across, and. It's, first, it's coated in carbon, a layer of carbon, which creates a sheet over the whole grid. So all of those, so you can see the completely black bits here, the sort of the black, um, the black lines are the copper. Over the top of that is a layer of carbon, which forms a sheet. And then the viruses are put on top of that, and then it's stained or negatively stained with probably something like osmium or something like that. It's some sort of heavy metal, basically, in a liquid form that's put on and allowed to dry down so that all the viruses are sort of surrounded by um, it. It's a very clever technique that I, once upon a time, did actually use myself many, many, many years ago. Now, um, OK, so each one of these grids is about 35 micrometres across. So a human hair, about three grids across. Let's zoom in. So the zoom button is immediately below me, and as I click uh, just on the bar there, it zooms in, and we zoom in, and we zoom in, and we zoom in, and we zoom in, and we just have to keep zooming in. Um, we are working, or we are going to be working, at pretty much the limit of this microscope. You really can't go much smaller than this with the sort of things we're looking at. Uh, normally what you would do is if, if you really wanted to look at this sort of specimen you would use a transmission electron microscope and this scanning electron microscope is sort of set up to work like a transmission electron microscope. Um, let's have a look at samples. So basically what you have here is all of these little dots here 
are virus particles, so they are everywhere. This is, I should point out, completely inert. The staining kills, I mean, it's not really alive, but it kills everything. Um, interestingly, you can see, can you see here and here, there's a sort of a square, a little square shape. These are the bits we've actually looked at previously and we've sort of burnt away um, the specimen. So the specimen has been damaged. So I'm gonna have to find other bits to look at. Let's, um, and so literally, I don't know what we're gonna see. We'll go to the, oh, now I have to do it on this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go here. I'll recenter on this nice little pair here, a little doublet, which you can just about see of virus particles. Let's zoom in on those. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're now at 38,000 times magnification. Okay. And if I, um, if I sort of go to a, a neat number, uh, let's go to 50,000 magnification. So we're now at 50,000 times magnification. Uh, what do we think to these? Um, are they any good? I'm just sort of I'm looking because some of the virus particles are better than others. Yeah, that one's all right. That one's OK. We can we can live with this. Um, I'm going to center again uh, on this little doublet. And we'll zoom in to we'll go up to 100,000 magnification, which is kind of the limit to where you would normally use this microscope. You wouldn't so you could go you can go closer in, but that's kind of what you would normally use. Ah, actually, these, this was a pretty good one, actually. So we've got two virus particles. Interestingly, they're slightly different sizes. They do vary in size. The size of the virus particles, well, they're going to be about 50. The actual central bit is 50 to 30 microns in size. Um, what you're seeing there, this central blob here, OK, the central white blob is the lipid bilayer coating or, or, or capsule, I suppose you could call this. I'm not entirely sure what some of the nomenclature is, but it's it's made of um, lipids, uh, the same lipids that are in you and I that make up our cell membranes. In fact, the lipids that make up the virus particles come from the host cell. Because what happens is these virus particles are coated in proteins. The proteins is called the spike protein. And you can see the spikes quite nicely on this upper one here. OK, I'll go in once more. We'll go up to 200. See whether we can, what we can see. But you can see now surrounding this one here is a rather nice little array of little dotties. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, that's just the background. And yes, the background has little, lots of little dotties in it. But if you look at this here, especially just here, you can really see there's a series of regular, almost like mushrooms sprouting from the surface of that thing. And that's the spike proteins. The spike proteins, there are actually three of them, identical proteins. They form a trimer and it inserts itself in that phospholipid bilayer that's there. And then inside that is a tiny little piece of RNA. It's quite a big piece of RNA as far as a virus is concerned, but it's a small piece of RNA. The spike proteins attach to your cells. Your cell, the, the virus is then engulfed and brought inside. It tricks the cell into doing that. That RNA, because it's not DNA, it's the RNA that is, comes out. The RNA is actually positive sense RNA. And what that means is it's the right sort of RNA to be immediately transcribed and turned into a protein. And that's what happens. It gets turned into proteins and the proteins uh, that it makes initially are then the ones that go on to take the RNA and make more RNA. And then it makes more protein and the proteins, the capsid, uh, the capsid proteins, the um, nuclear uh, capsid proteins, the membrane proteins, the envelope protein and the spike proteins. There's only four other proteins make up the whole virus particle. That's quite a good one. I quite like that one there at the top. You can sort of see, you can imagine it has that sort of halo around it. And that's why it's called a coronavirus, obviously. Coronavirus is relatively common, common cold, some common colds caused by the corona coronaviruses, some by rhinoviruses, different viruses cause colds. Um, but obviously this is the thing that causes uh, COVID-19. And it's, I find it quite sobering to actually look at this thing here, seeing on my screen. And I mean, I know I'm not anywhere near it, but it's quite sobering, isn't it? Let's face it, um, we are in strange times indeed. So um, 
that is uh, all I'm going to say about this now because I've been whittling on for a good 10 minutes now. Once again, thanks to Matthew Hanna at Public Health England. Thanks to Zeiss. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. Thanks to Zeiss for providing uh, uh, the help and the kit and the know-how to do all of this. Um, if you want to see more of my uh, videos, please go to my YouTube channel. The other ones that we're going to record on the COVID-19 virus are there. Or send me a tweet, ask me questions on, on Twitter. Tell me how much you've enjoyed this. It's good to get feedback. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, my, name is, my name is Marty Jobson. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.